Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I'm TX141, but you may call me Paul, welcoming you all to a brand new Ace in a Day gameplay for the arcade mode of War Thunder. In today's episode we shall once again be flying out in our North American Aviation P-51 Mustang, but this time we will not be reviewing the aircraft in a given circumstance, unlike the video which we did previously, as may be seen in the top right corner of your screen, as displayed now. Instead, we intend to use this replay, as you can see by the bar on the bottom of the screen, this is not live gameplay per se, we intend to use this replay to mark a symbolic milestone, indeed a historical one, for our channel, and that is reaching 1,500 subscribers as of the end of June 2015, but we will come to that shortly. To provide you a bit of background to this game, I cannot remember the map it was taken on, but what I do know is that this is a ground strike map. And because of the time at which this game was recorded, back in the early stages of patch 1.49, the P-51 at this point had a battle rating of 3.0 and a tier of 3, so this game is not truly symbolic of the nature of the P-51 as of patch 1.51. Although what I would like to point out is that this gameplay was the game that actually solidified my opinion of how the P-51 should be flown, and at the same time what settings to use. Here we have a 600 meter gun convergence, which was the first time I ever used that gun convergence in this plane, and we are using the air target belts for our 20mm cannons, and the 30 minute fuel load that we normally have. We've already knocked out a Messerschmitt Y9F4, and we're now pushing up towards a P-38G lining, but let us divert our gaze away from the gameplay, or indeed, let's divert the commentary away from it. As we go ahead and shoot a couple more planes down then, let's get onto the thank you. And I would like to implore my thanks to all of you, whether you are a brand new subscriber of today, a person who just watches my videos every so often and has not subscribed, or indeed a subscriber of old. Thank you for all your support for this channel. I'll tell you one thing, and that is this. No matter how many subscribers we obtain in the next month, in the next year, in the next 10 years, even if we do not go above 1,526 as it is of now, if we go no further tomorrow, I will not be upset. We hit 1,000 back in, I believe it was February of this year, or around about there, and my dream came true. My dream went, well it was beyond my dreams to even think that I could go above 1,000 subscribers, and we did that, and now 1,500, it's, it's even more monumentous day by day. And I absolutely love doing this, and you, as an audience, echo this brilliantly. Whether it be your lovely comments, bumping into me online and just saying hello, squadding up with me, or listening to me when I go on a complete rage trip, sometimes on the team speak, especially the DMH one, as a number of the clan members will tell you about. It doesn't matter, I absolutely love doing this, I love bringing these videos, and I love playing War Thunder, and that's what this is all about. And if it were not for you guys and girls being so supportive, that love would gradually die away, whether it be now or miles off in the future, and it will never die. That is something I can promise you, no matter what comes my way in life. And as a result, as well as saying thank you for all this, I want to bring you this game because this is statistically my best game I've ever recorded. And when I say my best, in terms of kills, score, XP, everything. But I'm not going to disclose any of the numbers to you, you'll just have to watch. And this game goes on for not too long, so as a result you haven't got too long to wait to see the final statistics. Now outside of the thank you, what else is there to talk about? Well, for those of you who supported the Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition playthrough, the first three episodes, thank you for that, I can see that the majority of you are not interested. As a result, I will not put that as a high priority, I will continue to do it where I've got spare time, but I'm not going to worry about it, in a vein as I would with the War Thunder review videos, or indeed anything to do with War Thunder, because what I've noticed is the majority of you are interested in my War Thunder material, and some of you are avid World of Tanks players, so I will pander to your audiences, I oh, sorry, your audience groups mainly, and do a little bit on the side in terms of the playthrough of Devil May Cry 4, when and where I have the time, and when and where you seem to have had your interest engaged with the War Thunder and the World of Tanks videos, and I hope that makes sense in the way I've worded that. On top of this, I've also noticed recently that there's been an avid reception for World of Warships, and I've had a number of you request that I play it or play it with you, and I'm going to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I've got nothing against wargaming, I've got nothing against World of Warships, I'm just not interested. As I say, I love War Thunder, no matter how many times you'll hear me swear on the microphone concerning it if you ever squad up with me, but that's just me getting rid of stress. We all have it at the moment, it's absolutely boiling in the United Kingdom. The other day it was 36.7 degrees Celsius, which I know I'm complaining, but that's very warm for where I live. But anyway, we're missing the point. 
I'm just not too interested in playing World of Warships at the moment. I just, I feel if I was to start making YouTube videos of it, I feel as I'd be cashing in on what everybody else is doing. I've noticed that a lot of channels, even the smaller ones, at the same sort of subscriber counts as my own, are all going to World of Warships now. They're leaving War Thunder behind for a bit, they're leaving World of Tanks behind for a bit, and they're going over to World of Warships because this is the new game that everybody will be interested in. And I've got nothing against that, so don't take that as an insult to any of you who are doing that and are watching this video. I just want to concentrate on what I enjoy. And as I've always said, and you've always echoed it back to me in the comments, do what you enjoy. This isn't your life, it's a hobby. And this will never be my life, as I've always said. This will be something I just do when I have the spare time to do it. And I haven't had too much spare time at the moment. I've got quite a few videos waiting to be edited and put together and commentaries put over them. But it's just a case of finding the time. But I eventually do, and you'll understand that. So there's no point in me sort of trying to ask or plead for understanding here. As we come down on A20G Havoc and cut them to pieces for what is our ninth kill already and add that onto the two assists. So when I talk about World of Warships, when you ask me, I will say no, but it's not because I hate the game or anything along those lines. I may take a look at it sometime in the near future, but please do not expect tons of videos to come out of it, even if I start playing it. It's just, it's not what I want to bring, and as a result, I'm just not going to bring it. Now, outside of that, what else is there to talk about? Well, I was going to talk about this in a TX's Talks video, and I probably will do, but I just wanted to iterate to those of you who are going, I will be attending the Duxford Flying Legend Show as of not this weekend as we are on now, the time of this video going up will be Saturday the 4th of July. I will be attending the Duxford Flying Legend Show as of the weekend of the 10th, sorry my apologies, as the weekend of the 11th through to the 12th of July. So if any of you are going, do feel free to let me know and I'm happy to do a subscriber meet up there, although I'll only probably be one or two of you at best. But we can all dream, as I always have, and I'm never going to stop dreaming. But anyway, having knocked out an 11th plane now, we push on. And what essentially this symbolises in terms of this gameplay is the fact that no matter what's come our way, we always break through and push forward. Now I want to put this in context, I had a question thrown to me the other day concerning subscriber counts and indeed sort of popularity, fame and breakthroughs on YouTube. Now, to give you an idea, when I started up the channel and I really started to put a lot of videos out there to try and build up subscribers just to see if I could get to a thousand. I started off at the same time as a number of channels. Now I'm not going to mention the individuals because that would be unfair and it would be it would be wrong to do that because it may be taken out of context once again and I don't want that to occur. But to give you an idea, say that three channels including my own all started at roughly the same time. And I started off by having roughly the same number of subscribers as these two channels or in some cases I actually ended up getting more. And I haven't really checked those channels out recently because I just don't know at the time. As we all don't, I've got to edit videos, I've got to go to work. Well, I don't have to edit videos, I choose to edit videos. But you get the picture. But I've now gone back and took a look at those channels. I've watched some of their videos and they're absolutely brilliant videos. And it turns out that they've got thousands more subscribers than my own. My own subscriber count, I should say. And I sat there and I thought to myself, how do I feel about this? Do I feel as though I'm being left behind? That is this going to dissuade me from carrying on with YouTube? And I thought to myself, no, because each person who uploads to YouTube has their own circumstances. Some people want to make a career out of YouTube. Some people just have so much spare time, they may be retired. They may only go to work because they're self-employed or they may go to work on a part-time basis. I can't judge those individuals because as I learnt from a very famous book, you may have heard of it, To Kill a Mock to Kill a Mockingbird, which was written by Harper Lee, I believe. There's a character in there, a young girl, who gets told by her father. I believe it's her father. Yes, Atticus Finch. And the girl's name's Scout. That you never truly appreciate someone's perspective until you put yourself in their shoes. And I did that. And I thought to myself, as I go for a really nasty head-on here with a P38G1 lining, who I personally believe was reloading their 20mm cannon and hesitated before opening fire. Otherwise, I would have been dead at that point, as we go on to our triple ace already. When I, when I thought back to that concerning why not put myself in the perspective of those people, I started to think to myself, you know what, I'm, in, I'm incredibly lucky. And by not, and I don't want to compare myself to those other YouTubers because it would be wrong of me to. We're all unique, we're all individuals. So as a result, that's what allows me sometimes when I log on and I see that I haven't gained another subscriber in four days, it what, it's what allows me to alleviate 
the, the potential feeling of feeling not depressed, but feeling down at the fact I haven't moved forward over the course of a night between looking at my Gmail account in the evening and then looking at it in the morning when I decide to go to work. It just doesn't give me that sort of down feeling that some people may associate with the quick wins of YouTube. As a lot of you may be aware, a lot of people come into YouTube with the expectation of being able to grow their channel incredibly quickly and if they can't do it within a certain time span, well they just run out of attention and care for it. But it's not the case with myself, but many of you may have gathered that already. Instead, we're just taking it step by step. And that means that when we have our successes, such as reaching 1,500 subscribers, if we just have, we enjoy those successes even more than we would normally do because they're rare to us, because they're unique to us, and indeed it's unique to anyone who runs a YouTube channel, but it's just our personal interpretation of the statistic. Indeed, even if we were still stuck at 500 subscribers, I hit that milestone again and looked back now, I would still be celebrating just as much as I am at the moment, and in fact, I, uh, I cannot stop smiling just simply because of the fact that again, as I say, I never expected to get this far. And as we pick up our 19th kill on an unsuspecting P51, we're seeing that we're already heading towards the 20 kill club here. So this is going to show you just how important this game is to me. And indeed, it's not the most beautiful of games. But now that we come off of the concept of YouTube and success and all that, which we should, we need to talk about this game a little bit. What I would like to point out with this game is, you've probably noticed I've done a significant amount of spawn kill on enemy bombers. And I decided just for a laugh on this game, I... I try to avoid spawn and I thought, you know, this is my final game of the night, I'm just going to go crazy. Pardon me? When I say crazy, I mean, just throw away some of the textbook stuff that I use, such as, don't spawn kill bombers, give them a chance to move out of their spawn, things along those lines. I just wanted to see if you really treated the P-51 as rough as possible, how well could you do in it? And as we cut apart another B-25 Mitchell here for what will be our 22nd kill, you can see that the P-51 cannon stang, as I like to call it back, at a battle rating of 3.0 was incredibly potent, and it still is a 3.7 in all respects, as we now drop out on a stall in Messerschmitt 109 E3 for kill number 23. So I want you to keep in mind when you see the final score here, that I am being as rough as possible, I have taken some severe risks such that head on with the P38G1, and I will never know why they, open, they didn't open fire on me when they had a clean shot and I opened fire on them, I will never know that reason. Maybe they were out of ammo? Maybe they couldn't bring their nose up, and according to the replay screen, we're actually seeing that they do have their nose up because of the latency discrepancy. We will never know that unless we interview the pilot, and I didn't quite catch the name. And so if we keep this game in context, you'll see that whilst I'm very proud of this game, at the same time, I'm a little bit quieter about it, simply because it's one of those 1 in 10,000 games for me, but at the same time, it's... One of those games where I really didn't obey the principles that I like to echo on this channel to a significant extent. And I will one day bring a tips video on how to bring a high sorry, how to complete a high kill game. I get, say, over 15 kills in a single game, or even over 20. They're very rare things though. They they have to have the right circumstances. You have to have so many factors on your side, such as luck. With every game you have luck in, every sport you have luck in. I believe there's a quote saying that in every given sort of sport or scenario there is always a 5% factor of luck no matter how good you are, etc, etc. And indeed I will try and break it down into the concepts of things such as luck, the players you go up against, things to look for when you're going for those high kill games, and all the items which, in my personal opinion, allow you to bring a high number of kills whether it be in a long game or a moderately long one such as we see here because the game extends into a time span of approximately 15 and a half minutes if you go from when our plane spawns in to when the game ends. So as I say, try not to take this game out of context for those of you who may initially look at it and see how many kills we have as we already have our pentuple, I believe it is, or penta ace, I 25 kills and 2 assists without being shot down. And we're just floating along here, and I believe I'm floating along here looking for a new target as the game's coming to its end. And also I'm actually starting to look at the statistics screen. Of course you cannot see this here in the replay, and I'm thinking to myself, oh wait, I'm on 25 kills now. Okay, better slow this down a little bit. But on top of this, what else is there to come for the channel then? Because when you hit a subscriber milestone, as I always have, I like to talk about what's to come next. Well, we've got a number of reviews coming. We've got the A6M5 Otsu review, which is my highest priority. We've got a number of subscriber spotlight videos coming up as well. Some very good ones, indeed ones that we can learn a lot from. And we also have two 
little reviews that are coming, including two Hurricanes. And these are going to be reviews on the Hurricane Mark IV, which is an absolutely pleasant plane at a battle racing of 1.7 at the moment, and the Hurricane, sorry, the Sea Hurricane Mark IC. And these are planes which seem to have got quite a bit of admiration from the community for their armament and indeed their overall nature, and I want to try and contextualise this to some extent. And as we dive down towards this TBF to pick up our final kill, the only other things to be aware of on the channel will be that in about a week and a half or Sorry, in a bit, about a week and a half's time, I will not be bringing any videos for a period of time in order to focus purely on bringing the TX's Tips head on video. I'm writing the scripts this weekend and I will be recording solely for that video in the near future in order to make sure it comes out by the end of July as I have promised. And with our 26th and final kill for this game now in the bag, and as we fly along and begin to jink side to side, celebrating and watching out for the flak, thinking that as soon as we get away, the flak's going to rip us to pieces. We can see now that the game is at its end, and this is the highest number of kills I've ever scored in a single game, with a top score of 6,000, sorry, a total score I should say of 6,210 points. With that being said, let's just take a look at the post-game stats. We were also fortunate enough to pick up a 7,500 Silverline Battle Trophy, and accumulating this into our overall statistics, we can see that our 26 kills and 2 assists allowed us to pick up 118,616 silver lions and 7,620 research points. With the number of research points, silver lions and kills here all being records for myself to date. And as we move into the final set of post-game stats, we can see by comparison the rest of our team, we came first by a rather extreme margin. Although I would like to point out once again that we need to take this entire gameplay with a pinch of salt as we were using the P51 Mustang back in the early stages of patch 1.49 when it had a battle rating of 3.0 and not 3.7 as it does now. On top of this we were also much more aggressive than we normally are. And this gameplay is not to act as a boasting point or indeed a point for me to gloat, but instead I intend to use this gameplay to demonstrate to you that if you have a dream, whether it be in War Thunder or indeed in life, so long as you keep to that dream, no matter what confronts you, the sky is truly the limit. And that is why once again I would like to say thank you ladies and gentlemen for allowing us as a channel to reach the 1500 subscriber milestone and it is now time for us to press on towards 2000. If you have enjoyed this video why not leave a like, comment or subscribe as you always do, for I have been TX141 and I bid you all farewell and a wonderful weekend ahead.